So, with just under 24 hours left until the scheduled Starship launch October 13th, everyone is eagerly anticipating it. we got SpaceX, NASA, and of course, all of us rocket enthusiasts. However, it seems that environmental agencies are not as excited, along with the FAA, the government's environmental body, that's been quite slow in granting SpaceX the necessary permits, the environmental group Save RGV has now filed a lawsuit against SpaceX accusing Elon's company of illegally discharging wastewater at the Boca Chica launch site in Texas. The root of this issue likely stems from the two water deluge tests that SpaceX did a couple days back. But honestly, this kind of seems ridiculous and really frustrating. It feels like this is a deliberate attempt to make things tougher for SpaceX before the launch. Now, if I'm not mistaken, they might be trying to stir up trouble, forcing the FAA to spend extra time dealing with this and potentially delaying the launch. Do you agree with me? If so, comment yes down there. We'd love to hear what you think. Moreover, they have not forgotten to demand a monetary settlement from SpaceX. This reminds me of Blue Origin in the ULA lawsuit, where they sued SpaceX, seeking damages for what seemed more like personal benefit rather than any actual cause. Definitely see some similarities here. The lawsuit is asking the court to impose a fines of up to $56,000 a day for every time SpaceX used the cooling system without a National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System permit in violation of the Clean Water Act. Save RGV alleges that this deluge system polluted nearby wetlands at least 13 times, violating the act with each occurrence. But this isn't stopping SpaceX, as they've got evidence proving their innocence. SpaceX stated on X, The Texas Commission on Environmental Quality conducted a technical review of Starship's water-cooled flame deflector, which uses potable drinking water, and determined that it does not pose risk to the environment. They even gave public documents to verify that. Now, of course, they didn't miss a chance to call out a Save RGV, highlighting that the group was fully aware of the TEQC review, but still filed what they called an unwarranted and frivolous lawsuit. It needs to be said that SpaceX has been one of the most transparent companies out there, but there are still organizations, haters, that can make things difficult for them, especially now as they approach the fifth Starship launch, a very important launch featuring technical experiments getting tested for the first time in the world. The importance of this launch goes far beyond SpaceX. It carries significance for NASA, the United States, and even humanity as a whole. NASA, a loyal partner of SpaceX, recently expressed their confidence in the fifth flight, which could also be seen as a message to environmental organizations and the FAA, encouraging them to make wiser decisions when it comes to approving Starship's launch permits. An October 9th meeting at the National Academy's Committee on Biological and Physical Sciences in Space, Bill Gerstenmeier, SpaceX's VP of Build and Flight Reliability, shared optimism about the potential for a successful booster recovery by the launch power. On the previous flight, we achieved landing with a half a centimeter of accuracy in the ocean, he noted. So we believe we have a good chance of getting it back to the tower. You heard that right. In the fourth launch, Super Heavy landed with the accuracy of half a centimeter on the ocean. That's less than a width of the fingertip. And again, it's in the ocean. Because of this, there is no doubt left about SpaceX's upcoming catch attempt. Super Heavy is sure to complete its mission successfully. This result also highlights how closely NASA and SpaceX are working together to monitor all developments of Starship's program that plays a critical role in NASA's projects. As the leading space agency in the U.S., NASA's statements carry some serious weight and will likely influence other agencies more than anyone else. During the October 9th meeting at the National Academy's Aeronautics and Space Engineering Board, Lori Glaze, acting Deputy Associate Administrator for NASA's Exploration Directorate, expressed NASA's excitement for the Starship flight, suggesting it could happen as early as next week. NASA's interest in Starship stems from its role in the lunar lander for the HLS intended for Artemis III. The human landing system is a critical path for Artemis III, Glaze confirmed. The next milestone for the HLS development involves an orbital propellant transfer demo. SpaceX plans to establish a propellant depot in Earth's orbit supplied by multiple Starship launches to fuel the Starship lander for its moon mission. SpaceX needs to show that they can effectively understand any challenges involved, Glaze said. 
A key aspect of this plan is how quickly SpaceX can launch tanker starships to fill the depot. The main pacing factor is how fast SpaceX can launch the systems to fuel the depot, Glaze said, adding that NASA is encouraged by SpaceX's project, including the building of a second launch tower at Starbase and potential to launch out of Florida. Glaze also highlighted SpaceX's efforts to recover and reuse the Super Heavy, a capability the company plans to test on this upcoming launch. Originally scheduled for the sixth flight, Super Heavy's booster recovery attempt got moved up to number five. This is one of the challenges in preparing for Flight Test 5, Glaze explained. This will be the core factor leading to the calculation of the number of refuelings for spacecrafts to get to the moon. Glaze did not provide a specific number, but noted that SpaceX expects to do about 16 propellant transfers for a lunar mission. We've all been watching SpaceX closely. They operate different from traditional aerospace companies, Glaze said. We are all monitoring their progress as they continue development. With such statements, we can't help but think that Starship Flight 5 is happening this Sunday. The timing of this upcoming launch surprised many of us, as the FAA had previously indicated that they weren't trying to release a launch license until late November. FAA cited changes in the mission profile from previous flights as the reason for the delay, a decision that drew criticism from SpaceX, CEO Elon Musk, industry groups, and supporters in Congress. The reason for this war of words seems to stem from Elon's political views as the head of SpaceX. Frankly, I think this reasoning is a bit unacceptable. The reality is Elon's political opinions might not align with many, but he's undeniably the most important leader in space exploration for this generation. We need to judge him based on the advancements he's helped create rather than his jokes or where he stands politically. As the founder of SpaceX, Elon plays a pivotal role in revolutionizing reusable rockets. This achievement has not only drastically reduced the cost of launching satellites and spacecraft, but has also opened up opportunities for businesses and organizations to get to space more easily. SpaceX's Starlink project, aiming at giving the whole world satellite internet, is gradually becoming a reality and has the potential to bring internet access to the most remote areas on the globe. This is a prime example of how innovations in the space industry can have a direct impact on people's everyday lives. SpaceX collab with NASA on several key projects, including getting astronauts to the ISS, has demonstrated the company's superior technical capabilities, not only saving the U.S. government money, but also fostering competition across the whole industry. In the broader context of the space industry or with working with NASA, Musk is not the only figure to stir controversy. His prominence, however, ensures that every action and statement he makes gets a ton of attention. Therefore, if the FAA's actions are retaliatory, it only shows that the leadership of the agency has a biased perspective. In September, an FAA official explained that the timing of Starship's license was influenced by an environmental review needing collaboration with multiple agencies. The FAA added that SpaceX only submitted new info mid-August dealing with the environmental impacts, which now covers a larger area than earlier reviews. In an October 8th statement, the FAA confirmed that it was still evaluating the info for the proposed Flight 5. The agency will make a licensing decision once SpaceX fulfills all requirements, but unlike previous statements, this one did not specify the late November timeline or any specific date. Industry sources suggest that the interagency reviews move faster than expected, enabling the licensing process to wrap up by the end of the week. SpaceX needs to quickly complete Flight 5 with a super heavy catch because time is waiting for no one. Besides its moon mission and collaboration with NASA, SpaceX also wants to conquer Mars. SpaceX is sending up five uncrewed starships to Mars over the next couple years. CEO Elon said this on a social media site, X. According to Elon, SpaceX has to wait for the next Earth-Mars launch window before sending out these missions. The window happens when Mars and Earth are lined up in such a way that flights between them take the least amount of energy and time. The next window is in 2026, and SpaceX might miss that deadline. If they do, the following window is late 2028 into 2029. If the uncrewed ships do land safely on Mars, Elon anticipates sending crewed missions during the 2028-29 launch window. And if the tests don't succeed, the company will try uncrewed missions again in that 2028 launch window and then push the crewed missions back to the launch window after that. No matter what happens with landing success, SpaceX will increase the number of spaceships going to Mars exponentially with every transit opportunity, Elon said on X. The ultimate goal, according to Musk, is the building of a self-sustaining Martian city in about 20 years. SpaceX president Gwyn Shotwell echoed these claims in an interview two years ago as well. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks so much for checking it out and hope to see you back here next time. Bye.